51% of our product needs to be in some way, let's get there so we can at least say the majority. That should be the magic word here. The majority of our company needs to be organic, sustainable, some way, shape, or form better, right? And I was constantly chasing, or we were constantly chasing this 51%. Because And I would sit in meetings and be like, are we at 51%? And there'd be the times where I'd be like, well, if you include this and that, it sends it over. I'm like, hey, include, let's just try to get there. Like, let's make it better, make it better. Like, can it be 20% organic cotton? Or, you know, how do we get there? And there's things like wheels that are toxic and you know, there's certain things you, it's really difficult to get around and you kind of got to check yourself. And there's so many ways you can do that wrong. But that became my thing. And there was a time when like we were very comfortably saying 51%. Like, wow, like we are at 51% between all these little things we're doing because Element had a very large footprint on printables. Mm. And the fact that we were getting most of our tees at the time were starting to become organic t-shirts. We had like big, big printables business. And those t-shirts were being distributed into PacSun and Tilly's and all over the flipping world. And to think that this is like the bread and butter of our company and the vast majority of it is organic, that's a good feeling. And to get those, you know, like where all of a sudden your t-shirts are the, the breadwinner of your business and it's organic, that's exciting. So that was really like something that was driving me in my mind with element and then a moment took place which is where i'm going with this story is that it was really silly like i said hey and this is pre-stance i think but either way it was like hey um i want all we had a really good sock business and i said to myself it could be really easy to do 100 percent of our socks organic like does anyone even care even care about the sock business like what kind of money does socks even bring in and it was just like nothing, right? Like nothing. Like we'd be stuck. We sold 20 socks. Like it's not even a business here. Like we, I don't know. And and again, we saw some traction with the socks thing, which is why it kind of like popped up on my radar. But it was like, hey, this is sort of like beer. I call it beer money. Right. I don't even drink, but that was like a thing. It's beer money, right? Like if we have no sock business or if we had a huge sock business, this is just like a perk. And everyone agreed. So I was like, well, let's do all organic socks. Like that's an easy one. We could literally right now today, is it true? Like, can we do 100% of our sock business be organic? Even if the sock costs a thousand dollars or $5 source an organic sock. So we end up making a hundred percent of our socks become organic. And we come up with a tagline, which I definitely do not think I thought of this. I think I probably read it somewhere, but it was like, leave no footprints. hundred percent. Okay. Come on, that's good. That's yeah. gold, right? Yeah. Or leave no footprints. I think they're like it's on signs all over national parks and shit. Right. But leave no footprints. Element organic socks. Right. So we're, not, we're all excited. We have a hundred percent of our socks are organic. You know, you're doing a catalog. You're able to claim it. You've got like cool copy of why they're organic, and you're like, oh man, we're making some traction. This is really some positive stuff. And also, you're setting a tone for like what might be able to happen to other product in the future because we use this as our ex example. And are people buying it? Do they believe in this whole concept? Like, let's just use this as like a little test. And it socks, no big deal, right? Everybody agreed. Everybody agrees. So our sock business really picks up. It starts doing quite well. And I'm like, wow, this whole sock thing is like organic socks at Element. Like, this is great. So what happened that, that really pivoted my entire perspective of business and private equity and corporate environments and the public company and paying attention to the numbers and all that was that here was this category that was completely off the reservation. Mm -hmm. And you, we were uh, growing it from pretty much nothing. And so then all of a sudden it got on the radar. You know, people are like, oh, what's that sock business over there? And you're like, oh, that's this whole thing. We're kind of killing it on socks. And so they were like, oh, we should try to grow that. You're like, I, I agree, we're doing it now, but sure, like that's always there's the money more quarterback. You're like, no shit, we've been like focusing on this for like two years. We've got it to 100% organic socks and it's growing. That was the point, right? That's why we did it. It's got a two page spread now in our catalogs. It used to be like the size of a fucking postage stamp and nobody cared about it. Now it's covering some real estate, it's becoming a business. So what went down was we were trying to source like 
uh, you know, grow the category and like introduce some more colors and like just do it, like have a proper assortment because it's a growing business. So what ended up happening was that someone at the time, and it's not important who it is, wanted to get a particular color of the sock or price point. I can't remember. Color, price point, doesn't matter. And by putting this one sock, one sock, which would actually be two, it's a set. So <laughs> it's a, that's an argument, right? Like, is that a one is sock a two or what? How does that work? These so this set of socks uh, in the line, they had somehow sourced a sock and they got it to the price point they wanted. And they were like, oh man, if we get this sock in this particular color at this particular price point, we're going to sell fucking thousands of these things. I was like, oh, sick. Is it organic? They're like, mm mm. I'm like, well, dude, don't, we can't make it. Like the, the whole business is hanging on this concept and it's a, it's a big win for the company. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I either, again, I, I, cause I, it's just so long ago. I don't know if I agreed cause in my naivety and just wanting to please the machine, I let it slide or I kicked and screamed and like, I, I don't honestly don't remember. But more importantly, what happened is the sock squeezed into the line because that was so it was so important to get that organic that non-organic sock to grow the business that we were no longer able to say this entire campaign that said 100% of our sock line like even in a sales meeting you could be like hey buyer all of our socks are organic this is our angle you had to be like 99.999% of our socks are organic except for this one that's like a nickel and it's pink and they're like huh and that showed the the ignorance of the machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it just broke my heart. It, mm -hmm. it literally just destroyed me yeah. because of how symbolic this moment was because it really was, meant so many other things yeah. to me. Totally. And that I carried that with me for a really long time, like in my little bag of resentment mm -hmm. um, because I would see it happen throughout corporate world all the time and I'd speak to other people and back to what you said earlier, like at what point do you, am I going to be part of the problem and complain and, or am I going to like, just do my own shit and element. One thing you can't do, this is some like to the listeners out there. One thing you can't, I don't think you should do is if you have a big epiphany in your life and you have a company that's propped up and doing well and everybody's, prospering from it and you know you've got 25 years of dna there and you have an idea i think a big problem people do is they'll take that idea as a selfish leader and they plug it into the company and disrupt everything right like all of a sudden and you've heard these stories where like the ceo gets into like golf and all of a sudden they're like hey we're gonna buy a golf company and you're like what why because we have a shitload of money and i love golf and i want to go play with fucking tiger woods and you're like all right i guess we're buying a golf company because whatever said we are. And then you just get way off track and everybody's sidetracked. You're out of your, you know, the DNA and what you're meant to be. So there was a piece of that happening where I'm like, what I want to do isn't what Element needs to do anymore. And Element is great. I love it. Like it's a beautiful brand. And, but at the same time, I can't be the person yeah, I've sold it. I don't own it anymore. It's, run by private equity. I've got stakes in the deal, but at the end of the day, it's not my business. You know, you have to realize that seller's remorse. It's a real thing. And I was like, these things are happening. It's in the best interest of the shareholders. That's why you sell businesses. That's why private equity buys companies. You have to realize that. And I didn't realize that. Like, that's a new thing for me of like, wow, I made a lot of executives suffer the, in the board or in the private equity, because I was thinking about it still like I was my money, you know, back to like my money and my business. And it is a good idea, the things I wanted to do, but it's not necessarily what those guys, they, they bought it. They want to turn it into a rollerblade company. That, that's their prerogative. Like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I could fight, kick and scream and whine and do whatever I want and give them my opinion, but hey, they bought it. And that's, that's, a, that's a really big, gnarly, jagged pill to swallow. Um, but I swallowed it and I realized that I had to go do my own shit. Mm -hmm. And again, 
I'm not throwing anyone under the bus because I do think that those guys and those executives and all corporations, public company, private equity, you name it, it's their shit. And like you said, if you don't like it, go and do your own thing. So we just couldn't see eye to eye on those things. And I under, I just kind of like came to terms with that. And I was just ready for, for change. And so it was just like a really aha moment of that sock story combined with a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is a bold statement and I don't mean this in a, in a, in a bad way, but elements kind of not a skateboard company anymore. Right. Like that's cool in many ways. Like how I said, I had that aha moment of a woman in a yoga class wearing an element shirt. Well, it's that to the nth degree now and it's fashion and it's clothing. I'm a skater forever. Yeah. I will be a skater till the day I die. I will literally be buried with a skateboard. Mm -hmm. Like I'll be cremated or buried with a skateboard. You guarantee it. And no matter what happens in my life and no matter how many times people would try to call me out, I will, that's one thing I might struggle claiming to be an artist or claiming to be an entrepreneur. But one thing I don't struggle with at all is that I am 100% skateboarder. And when my brand or not my brand is becoming a clothing brand, which again, that's cool. That's okay. Like I'm proud of that. Like we made high fashion and shit and like on runway shows and they're designing amazing stuff with amazing clothing designers and people are wearing it everywhere. And it's like shit that back when I was into fashion, I'm proud of that, but that's not, I'm a skateboarder at the end of the day. And I don't want to be running a clothing brand and they don't want a skater running a clothing brand. Cause I'm just constantly going to be turning it back to well, what does this have to do with skateboarding? What does this have to do with our original DNA? It's like a broken record player. Who wants to hear that shit all day? If I owned it, I'd be like, fire that motherfucker. Like, seriously, <laughs> like, is he going to bring that skateboard shit up? We just paid X amount of dollars for that. I don't want to hear that shit. I didn't buy a skateboard company. I bought a skateboard company that's going to become a fucking massive clothing brand. Yeah. And if that's what it's going to be, that's not the game I'm playing. Hell yeah. Well, um, dude, first of all, thank you for the vulnerability there. Because you said a lot of stuff there, like things that can resonate, things that I could imagine maybe in my own future. Like uh, there's a lot of cool stuff there. And for anyone who's just like, you start something cool, you start out of your garage, your apartment, whatever it is, some people, and, and for most people, that thing fizzles out, you do your next thing, you do your next thing, and maybe nothing pops for them. Right. For some people, something pops and you get attention and people care. And at some point, you got to let it go. You do. And that letting it go. It's very hard. It's super hard. It, yeah, it, it's really hard. hard. And, and what you just shared, uh, I think is um, really incredible. And I appreciate